Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and another huge iOS update has been released. iOS 16.2 is finally here and it brings a lot of new features and changes to iOS. So in this video, I will show you guys the first 10 things that you should do once you have your device updated to iOS 16.2. The first thing you should do is subscribe to the channel. Most of you guys that watch my videos are currently not subscribed. So if you're one of those and you want to see more iOS 16.2 videos, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps out a lot. And now we're moving to the actual iOS 16.2. And here's the first thing you should do. Head on to your settings, go to general, go to software update, go to automatic updates and make sure you have this turned on right here. Now this is security responses and system files. Now since iOS 16.2, Apple will now be releasing security responses. These are basically updates that will come to your device for security fixes and things like that. It's not an iOS update, so your iOS version one change once you install it is just like fixes that Apple does and they will now push them without you having to actually update your iOS software. So what you need to do is head on to the settings here, automatic updates, and make sure you have this turned on. Now these updates, Apple actually did release a couple of those during the beta stages of iOS 16.2. I did install them. They will take just a few seconds to install, but if you don't want to bother with those, you can have them installed automatically. Just make sure you have it turned on right here. The next thing you should do, and you should do this every time you update your device, make sure you go to settings, go to general, and just go to the about page. Now, when you go here, if you have a carrier update, for your device then the carrier update will show right there as a pop-up so there is no actual button to update your carrier your carrier settings or things like that but you just head on to the general settings about and if there is something it will show up right there now with the release of iOS 16.2, Apple has released this new feature called advanced data protection. And advanced data protection will encrypt your data end to end. And you can see the types of data that it encrypts right here. And most importantly is backups. But what I suggest you do is once you have installed iOS 16.2, whether you're planning to use this feature or not, always make sure that you go to account recovery right here and set it up add a recovery contact someone you trust or create a, basically enable a recovery key right here because as you can see right here apple says that apple will not have the keys required to decrypt your data so you will be responsible for your own data when you encrypt them so make sure the first thing you do is go ahead and set up a recovery contact or a recovery key the next thing you should do is make sure that you have all of your apps up to date. So head on to the app store settings, even if you have enabled auto updates for apps, those might take a few days to update automatically. So head on to the app store, go to your account, refresh it and see if you have any updates and always make sure that you update your apps because every time we get new iOS software releases, a lot of apps, especially the bigger apps, the apps that are more popular will get new updates to basically be more compatible with that iOS version. So always make sure that you have the latest versions of your apps installed on your device. The next thing you should do on iOS 16.2 is enable the new widgets. So if you use sleep or use the health app to track your medications, then you will have two new widgets for your lock screen. So you tap right there and you go here, you will have the sleep and also you will have the health widget. So you go here, you will have your medications, your schedule, which is really, really important. And then you will have the sleep here as well. So here we have sleep. So the sleep schedule and all that, you can now have it on the lock screen of your device. So go ahead and enable, especially the medications widget. That will be really, really important. If you use it, if you have any medications and you use the health app to track those, make sure you add it to your lock screen. As you probably know, when you update your device, you will see a change on the battery health of your device because iOS won't actually update the battery health without you updating your device to new software. So whenever you update your device, it basically iOS will go through all the components of the device and we'll check on them and then it will also show you the real battery health of your device. So what I suggest you do, head on to settings, battery, battery health and charging and right here you can see the updated battery health of your device. 
And what I suggest you do as well is always make sure that you turn on optimized battery charging. That will keep your device's battery in great shape on the long run. So make sure you always have this enabled. If you're someone that has been using the iOS 16.2 beta versions, the public beta or the dev beta, and you no longer want to have a beta on your device, what do you have to do after you have updated your device? If you have updated to, uh, to the RC version, then you won't get an update for iOS 16.2. But if you're on the beta and you remove the profile, you will get the update. But if you no longer want to be on the beta program, what you have to do is head on to your settings, go to general, go to VPN and device management, and make sure you remove the beta profile. That way you will take your device out of the beta program, whether that be the public beta or the dev beta. And the last three things that you should do once you have updated your device is check on some really important stuff. Now, I always suggest people that they do this. They, you should do this basically maybe every once a week or a month. But if you don't want to do that, the best time maybe it is when you update your device. And first of all is check the privacy settings of your device. And you can do that by going to privacy and security. And what I suggest people do is that they check things basically sensors that can be used by other apps on their devices things like bluetooth the microphone your camera or maybe even like speech recognition right there motion and fitness and things like that so if you want to just know which apps are using your microphone you can go here and you will see a list of apps and of course you have the enabled buttons as well now, a lot of times when we install new apps and we go through a setup, we might just allow things without actually checking them and without seeing what they're requiring from us. And you might give access to something like your microphone or your camera. So maybe an update is a great time for you to go through this and check all of the items here and see if you have allowed access to anything to any app that you don't want to. The next thing I suggest you do is head on to your settings, go to privacy and security, and then go right here to app privacy report. Make sure you have this turned on. What this will do is that it shows you right here whatever apps are using on your iPhone. So data and sensors, you will have here app network activity, and it shows you all the apps when they use your sensors. Like right here, it, show, it shows in this case, mail, it has used contacts, six minutes ago or maybe calendar it has used contacts you can see messages it has used contacts and the camera of my device six minutes ago so you can see all the details of every app and what they are actually using on your iphone and last but not least head on to emergency and sos and make sure you have these enabled these are really important i hope nobody needs this but if you need them then they can be really really helpful so you will have here a few options so basically the newer one here is called after severe crash this is for the newer iphones and make sure you have this enabled because now it has been improved a lot with ios 16.2 so make sure you have this enabled and also always make sure that you have an emergency contact set up on your device of course you can do it from the section right here add someone you trust and make sure that you always have an emergency contact on your iphone so that is it for this video guys hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like if you did subscribe for more iowa 16.2 videos and i'll see you on the next one